Thank you for this opportunity uh, for me to speak about my country. And I would like to thank you all, you all, for being here. And uh, I just want to say in my, the different language of my country, Fofo, Barka, Aniche, merci beaucoup, thank you for being here. <laughs> and I would like to say also that it is really a great opportunity for me to talk about my country. And also, uh, it's also for me, as a citizen of my country, the first one here in, uh, at the Maxwell School, uh, I see myself as an ambassador uh, of my country here in the University of Syracuse. So I hope to meet one of uh, us one day here in this, on this campus. So to start with, um, yeah. Oh, you know what? Just hit escape from the office. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Oh, okay. So, I know many of you maybe never hear about my country and where is Burkina Faso exactly. I know that the Anfro fellow knows about already about Burkina Faso. So, here is Burkina Faso in the world. It's in the West African side. And this country is full with a lot of symbols and inspiration that you will be seeing in the next slide. Burkina Faso means land of people with integrity. This is the meaning of the word Burkina Faso. It also means land of incorruptible people. And the flag of Burkina Faso has also meanings. The red color means fight. The green one means hope. And the star means victory. And as you can see, the country has another symbol, which is the white horse. And the white horse comes from uh, the Morsi people. This is the majority tribe in Burkina Faso. And the symbol of the horse is kingdom, is also Morsi uh, empire epic symbol. And it means that we are kings. And also it shows the value of the, the people of this tribe to overcome in all the fight that they will be facing in uh, you know, trying to improve their life. And also we have a motto. I know many countries, as many countries have a motto, and this motto for my country means, country or death we shall overcome. These are all the symbols that are behind this country, Burkina Faso. So, concerning uh, the topography of Burkina Faso, you will see that in the north side, it is more desert. And uh, in the south, you will see more forests and fruits, you know, plants more than in the north side. As you can see, you have more sand than trees. Uh, about the culture, we have uh, 62 different language and tribe in this country. We have also a different kind of tradition and the culture. And we have a mixed society, we have a, a tradition and modern life that mix together. So uh, the official language is French. This is uh, also the language that you know unites us as uh, a country, the official language. And uh, I would like to talk about some symbols, you know, cultural, like uh, this, this big tree. This big tree is a symbol of uh, uh, African, I mean, in Burkina Faso especially, in every kind of tribe, if the people have conflict and they, they want to solve the conflict, they will gather you know, under this, kind, this tree that we call Baobab. I don't know how you call it in English, but I'm not sure that you have this. Yeah, Baobab? Okay, okay. So, and this is the symbol of you know, conflict resolution in this uh, country. I know also that many African 
uh, West African country have the same symbol of you know, resolving the conflict. What about the tourism of Burkina Faso? I have to notice that Burkina Faso is uh, the country, and Ouagadou especially, is the capital of African movie festival. Is, is, is the, I can say it's, it's kind of African Hollywood. <laughs> and also, uh, about the handcraft, but Ouagadou is known to be uh, the African uh, handcraft market, you know, and we have it every two years. Uh, we have different kind of festival. Uh, if you have a chance to visit uh, Burkina Faso, you will see that is, Ouagadou is known to be also uh, a capital of good chicken. If you, if you like to eat chicken, natural chicken, you, you should go to Ouagadougou. <laughs> and as you know, sometimes people see Africa in a different perspective. You have uh, this uh, rural world that the people will present and ignoring that there is modern life also. So it's a mixed society. We have uh, this modern life. We have also this rural life that we have two reality in Africa. So now let us talk about our subject. Before, you know, talking about this uh, popular uprising that happened in 2014, we should now notice what is the political story of this country, and this will give us a clear idea of what is going on in this country and what's happened really in this country. To start, I'll say that the Burkina Faso, mostly Ouagadougou, had been, you know, built by Mosi Kingdom, which is the majority tribe in Burkina Faso. And Mosi Kingdom, you know, defeat, I think, was defeated by France, you know, a colony in, in 1895, 95. And uh, uh, in 1996, Burkina Faso became French protectorate. In 1904, the uh, territory of Alt Volta, you know, had been part of West African colonial empire because all of the West African country, most of the Francophone ones, you know, was under the control of French colony. And uh, what's happened uh, uh, sometime in Burkina Faso have not been, you know, as you can see in the map, on the map, there was time that uh, Burkina Faso was separate, you know, from other country, and then it had been demantled between and divided between Ivory Coast and uh, uh, French Sudan. This is Mali right now, and also Niger. And then something happened because of the, the interest of the people from Burkina Faso to to have their own country. So they fight for it, and uh, they get uh, the country back in 1947. And uh, in 1960, this is the, the period of all the African, West African especially, uh, Francophone West African country got the independence from France. And the first president name is uh, 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 Maurice Yamego. In 1966, something happened. This was the first uprising that happened in Burkina Faso. I will say even in uh, the West African country that uh, a mass demonstration will make move a, a president from power. And because uh, of the context of this movement is because the president, uh, we, I think there was a kind of uh, economic and financial crisis and why the the, the worker was facing to have the salary paid. The president was moving from country for, to country, visiting, and like the people say this as, you know, uh, not being right with them. And if there is a financial crisis, it needs to be solved together, and everybody needs to adjust his life to where this uh, financial crisis, economic crisis. So in 1980, happens the first military coup d'etat. 
that was led by one of the military that is called Seizebo. In 1982, uh, there was a, a, a second military coup d'etat that happened in 1983 also, another coup d'etat happened also, where the military was in power in this country. So you will see that most of the president of Burkina Faso are military uh, soldiers, or, or all of them, most of them, most of them. And so I would like to talk more about this uh, revolution that happened in 1983. And as you know, Burkina Faso was not called Burkina Faso. It was called Ultra Volta for most of the people. Many people know this, na this, na this name, but some may not know that Burkina Faso was called uh, Ultra, Ultra Volta. And what happened is in 1983, between the military captain, there was a kind of struggle to, to find a way to lead the, the country in the best way. So there were some young people in the, the, uh, the, 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 the army that found that the way the, the older soldier was trying to lead the country was not the right thing. They were not defi I think defending the rights and also the interests of the population. And so they found that uh, to rectify this way, they need to take power. As a young people, they have the strength to change things. And that's, uh, the leader was Thomas Sankara. And Thomas Sankara is one of the African leaders that is still you know, well known in, in, among the young people. And is, he was also someone that has some great idea about Africa because he was a Pan-African you know, uh, fighter. So what about this revolution? I would say that the leader of the revolution, as you can see, uh, when he took power, he was 36 years old. He was mossy. He was also brilliant, charismatic. Since his young age, he was defining you know, the right of you know, uh, this country, the right of African uh, nation generally. And uh, he was inspired by some uh, African leaders that was fighting for independence, like Kwame Nkrumah and all these, uh, you know, uh, leaders. And he took power with his friend Blaise Compaoré and other, you know, captain of the, the army. And uh, uh, he was also popular among the young people and uh, close to citizens. He was the one that will get, uh, you know, uh, among the population without any fear to be, you know, killed or wherever. And so there were four in power. And as you can see, I call them the four musketers. And what happened, uh, this man, when he took the power, one of his quotes that I really like is, you cannot carry out fundamental change without certain amount of madness. In this case, it comes from non-conformity, the courage to turn your back on the old formula, the courage to invent the future. It took the madness men of yesterday for us to be able to act with extreme clarity today. I want to be one of those mad men. We must dare to invent the future. So, and most of the is uh, quote can be that are very popular in Africa can be seen here. And as he was a defender of the human rights, which is at this period very scarcity. He was one also that was fighting what he called imperialism, is a, the way that the Western country was trying to, to, to take some resources from you know, West Africa or for Africa general, in general. And uh, also, one thing that uh, you can see with his uh, politic, uh, he tried to define that we should learn to count on ourselves and not wait for others to give us uh, and to help us. And one of his quotes is, we should not wait. I mean, we cannot accept the earth that, you know, take us in a bondage. We accept the aid that help us to be free from the aid. And as he say, he who controls you, he who food, food you, feed you, control you. 
And one of the things that he liked to, to say also, we must learn to live the African way. It is the only way to live in freedom with dignity. The, the revolution has its action that we can notice as a result of this political, you know, ideology for change. And most of the results that we can uh, uh, notice is it has this kind of uh, social, ecologic, and uh, economic change that's happened because it, it built, uh, I would say that it set a program and political, you know, uh, orientation that make a lot of change. It was a bold and like it renamed the country Burkina Faso. And this is a way to make people see themselves in the way their country is called. And Burkina Faso is mixed with, the, I think that the Burkina come from Mori, which is the, the most popular language speaking in, 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 in Burkina Faso. And the second language is Jula. So Burkina Faso, as you see, the meaning is land of incorruptible people. And this is the way also to give the, 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 the citizenship value of the, uh, to the, 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 the citizen of the country. And so by spelling the name of the country, they see themselves as a standard of living that they should express wherever they, they, are, they are going or who, whatever they are doing. This was the idea that was beyond the name of this country. And also we should notice that he, uh, did, he did many things, you know, as a, a debt re reduction and uh, he nationalized many lands and also uh, uh, many min mineral uh, welfare that was in control uh, on, by some company that was not, uh, you know, working in the good gym. One of the things that uh, we should notice that during uh, his power, there was a change in the education system. There was many, uh, I think that many children start going to school and uh, the, the, the rate of uh, young, uh, I mean, the rate of literacy get improved because of this policy, education and policy that's happened during this period of time. And uh, in, uh, according to uh, some reports, he made uh, a lot of change also by improving the health system. The health system gets a lot of improvement. As you can see, there was around two millions of uh, children that receive uh, uh, protection from different kind of, of disease. Uh, he tried also to protect the environment. And uh, one of the things that we should notice is uh, about the, the public affair, there was a lot of uh, change because uh, it took some decision about how the public servants should work in order to define the interest of general interest, not the uninterest through corruption or all those practices that is not working very well. So uh, from this period, I will say that uh, most of the public servants, you know, start taking into account most of the things that was happening, you know, in the public service. I mean, fighting corruption, working in different kind of things too to build the country and to improve also the welfare. And one thing to notice is that IMF and the World Bank recognized that there was a, a, a strong economic, uh, social economic performance as never seen in this country during this short period of time. <coughs> uh, what's happened in 1987, uh, this president had been killed through a, a coup d'etat organized by one of his friends that was also his companion. It's called Blaise Compaore. And Blaise Compaore also took power uh, during this period. And he changed the, the orientation of the political, uh, uh, I mean, uh, political orientation of uh, Thomas Sankara during this time. So what he did, you can see it, he introduced some uh, uh, democratic, limited democratic reform. His, part, his party was popular and also, uh, I think, win more 
uh, more than five, I would say four elect election uh, during uh, his, his rule. And uh, what to notice is in 1980, uh, yeah, 1998, uh, he won the election, but uh, there was a, one of the journalists that was very popular, I said, been killed because of uh, his, uh, was pointing some wrong, you know, uh, political action that was happening, like corruption, like also human rights that had been, you know, violated during this period. And the, 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 the political story, one of the things that we should notice that explain also uh, what's happened in 2014 is that this president, as you can see, Blaise Compaore uh, was discussing with Barack Obama about uh, uh, this uh, sentence, that's, uh, this quote of Barack Obama at the uh, African uh, uh, president meeting, where he was saying uh, that thing is, it was in South Africa, I cannot remember exactly, and he was saying that Africa doesn't need, doesn't need strong men, it needs strong institutions. And this president was saying that Africa needs strong men to build strong institutions. It's kind of conflict between, you know, the two, the two you know, cult, the, 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 the way they see uh, as African, uh, the way that Africans should be lead. It's kind of trying to find the best way of governance uh, for African nation. So what's happened in 2011 is that people start complaining about the way the country is, is, is led by this president. There was a lot of corruption. There was a, there was a lot of uh, nepotism. There was also a kind of uh, the, fa the presidential family was controlling even the, pu the public administration, and they, they choose whoever they want to be in this position, and people were very frustrated, and there was not I think freedom was not enough for people because you cannot say what you want. You cannot say what you want. And all the people that tried to do that got some issues or they have been killed uh, or maybe uh, they will go to, to prison. And because of that, people start getting, you know, this kind of, they contain themselves, but there was a time that they could not anymore keep what they was feeling. And as you know, the world is connected and uh, uh, people was mad about what is happening uh, in the country. And as you can see, from here to here, there was a kind of the people, many people get, you know, uh, the popular, I think you will see most, more people that was going out to fight for change in the country. In 2013, thousands of demonstrators take to the street over plan to create a center because the president, after many years, you know, of ruling, I think 27 years, he was trying again to modify the constitution to to rule for more years the country, and there was uh, more frustration because 20, 27 years is kind of most of the young people at this period at this time was not born, and they were frustrated to see one president stay in power, stay in power during all this time. So in 2000, uh, in October 30 to October 31, and this mass popular protest, you know, uh, happened in Ouagadougou, as you can see, and people were very, very, uh, I think, uh, willing to change things about uh, what is happening. And there was more than a million people that was out. And, uh, and as you can see under the, under the picture, people faced even the military force that was very strong and they used their arm to, you know, to shoot people with the rear guns. And uh, you know, we have around uh, 40, you know, 24 people that was killed during this, uh, this demonstration. So what are the causes of this, uh, of this uh, popular uh, uprising? I think the, the, because the president was willing to change the constitution, this made people very, uh, I mean, uh, mad about what was his willing to say again in power. And 
there was not real democracy because we have more than nothing, four election, but always the president will win. And why the president always win? One of the reasons is that uh, you have election, but people are not, uh, I mean, you cannot express different point of view about, you know, choosing uh, another candidate. And uh, one thing is the increasing, you know, rate of unemployment. And there was a frustration between the among young people, and there was corruption, as, as I told you, and also presidential family that hold business and control of public administration, and young people had this need of changing. And as I told you about uh, Thomas Sankara ideology, people found it to be the most good ideology for the country to be lead. So there was, there was a call for this kind of uh, lead in the country that was very different uh, during the time of this president. So one thing also is uh, the traditional you know, uh, views of uh, government leadership. You know, uh, because of the Morsi kingdom, king are see, uh, have been seen as people that could not be changed. It means that if you are in power, you could not be changed unless you are, <laughs> you die. Unless you die. So this, in the villages, because uh, Burkina Faso have more people in the villages than in, than in town, so in the village, people could not see any way uh, of, uh, I mean, leading the country. If you are king, if you are president, I think they were not, uh, people were not seeing the difference between kingdom and rep republic, republic, you see. And so this ways of thinking was also controlling many citizens. And one thing that uh, make uh, things change is Facebook, social media. As you can see, people were uh, you know, sharing more information about you know, how uh, the country should be lead. And we have some external causes about this uprising movement. Is the success of uh, Senegalese social movement, Yanama, that's happened in 2011. And uh, the second thing that happened is uh, also the Arabic Spring you know, movement with uh, some uh, uh, protests that, that make change in Tunisia and also in uh, uh, what we say uh, in Egypt also. All right, what are the actors of this movement? We have uh, uh, some uh, people that face death. As you can see, this man is, it was in the good position in public administration. He was a fiscal officer. So why this, this young man would choose to face the military force as he was already living in the good condition of life? There was this uh, you know, feeling, this need of change that was so strong among the people, the, the young people. And uh, so one of the quotes is that they would like to die than to stay in this way of governance. And uh, uh, people were looking for more democracy and uh, freedom and justice. And uh, so, as you can see, there was more than uh, 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 third, 24 people that was also in jury during this uh, uh, uprising movement. And we have some symbol that people use to, to, to make, you know, to have more people that will be involved in this, uh, in this movement. We have the broom, we have the spatula, and we have also the music. The broom meaning is to, to clean the country. And they were using this, this, this symbol during the fight, during the movement, to show that we need to clean now the country because enough is enough. And the second is the, uh, the spatula. That has been used by women. And in the family, uh, I mean, in the African tradition, if a woman takes this, uh, again, is, 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 I think the head of the family is a, this kind of, you know, is a bad sign. It can be seen as a curse because, you know, it's kind of not a rebellious you know, action against, you know, uh, uh, her husband. <laughs> so women gather and take this to tell the president that enough is enough. Things need to change. 
because we cannot accept this anymore. And uh, music, as you can see, ra rap and uh, reggae music was uh, the, the, the thing that are the, the, the most popular music in, uh, in uh, among the young people. So these people, the two uh, you know, guys, as you can see, are the leaders of the, this uh, uh, music uh, movement. So they unite themselves to create a movement that they call uh, Ballet Citoyen. That means that citizen boom to change things in the country. And uh, the impact of this movement is uh, at Fedo, this movement, we have better democracy that's happened in the country because we have transparent election that's happened in 2015 after the president had been moved from power. And we have also more accountability. Uh, we have also this uh, willing of the government to change things by bringing back or going back to the standard that had been setting during uh, this uh, uh, movement, uh, this uh, revolution that happened in, in 1984. And uh, we have now more freedom because people can see what they want through social media right now. And uh, one of the things that I would like to notice is that this uh, popular uprising that's happening in, uh, in my country start affecting governance you know, in the West African country, even in the Central Africa uh, area. We have uh, some movement like uh, uh, Lucia in Congo and Togo also. There was kind of many movement uh, for, 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 you know, for you know, trying to defend and trying to make things change in their country. Uh, and one of the tools right now, as you can see, in my country, the president had, uh, I mean, that they, there is an action. We use a, a tool to, to measure its performance about its commitment, its political commitment to improve things in, in, in my country, which we call president. And this is an independent tool to measure the president, you know, commitment as if it's realized or not realized. So the latest one is that, that the president did not have a good mark, as you can see, is four uh, after ten. And uh, one thing to note is that, uh, uh, as you can see me dress, all the the, the, the the member of the government will not dress like uh, 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 you know before. They start you know you know valuing the the, the, the resources uh, you know of the country. And uh, the president, even if he come to in, in the United States, will dress like a dress. Uh, this is a way also to 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 to, to use to, to learn to, to 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 consume what we produce as uh, 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 Burkina Bay in order to improve, to build our economy, because uh, many people, many uh, uh, rural world need also this uh, kind of economical reform to benefit uh, from what we are doing. So this is, uh, uh, these are uh, the impact on the consequence of this movement that happened in the, the country. More, we can say more about it. But I would like just to show you a two minute of video, if I still have time. Yeah, okay. That will give you also uh, different views about this uh, movement that happened in Burkina Faso. Burkina Faso, pays des hommes éteints. Vous savez que les versets congolais ont travaillé, ils ont intégré la Burkina Faso. Pour nous, nous sommes à l'ère de la restauration de cette valeur. On n'était pas des cinéastes. Ce n'est pas là, on était des cinéastes activistes. Mes amis disaient qu'il avait la caméra dans sa robot. Et l'autre, il avait un peu de c'était un certain de moi. Aujourd'hui, dans le continent, et c'est la pression de l'équipe. Si, de manière très sérieuse, des choses, des idées, 
Enfin, le genre, c'est tout. Quand vous le faites avec la poésie, vous le faites avec le mot, vous le faites avec l'art, eh bien, vous sublimez ce message. Le roi, allez, à feu, le roi, on a tous les micros, les gens vous disent ce qu'on pense, allez, à feu, le roi, c'est que pour des deux, il est sur toi, vous écrivez quoi, ça, 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 il y a des gens qui ont perdu leur vie, donc c'est parfait, ils sont dans le côté. Il y a un petit peu de changement ici. Et comme le disait Thomas Sankara lui-même, tout ce qui est imaginable à l'esprit de l'homme, il y a des armes à Okay, thank you for your presence. And uh, I would like to finish to say that uh, uh, we are still on a fight, and this uprising movement is not the end. We are right, right now facing this, uh, some issues like security issues, like uh, also our currency that is still uh, on control. And we are also on the way Uh, trying to find a way for optimal governance uh, in our country. And uh, we, have, we have different kind of uh, uh, fight right now that's happened, like every you know, country in the world. And we think that one day we will overcome all these issues. Thank you again for your presence. And now, uh, question if you have. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I have sort of a uh, voucher mm -hmm. question, but mm -hmm. starting with the, the moves that you said in the beginning, mm -hmm. the country or that, mm -hmm. um, this is used to be a mm -hmm. moves, but used by mm -hmm. many Latin American okay. socialist right. movements. Right. And I want to understand and mm -hmm. to know if, if you know more about the influence of these mm. Latin American socialist movements in this revolution in Burkina Faso. This right. is the okay. Can, can I answer this first one and the second okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one thing to notice is that this revolution that's happened in Burkina Faso was close to the, 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 the Latin American revolution. So, for example, Thomas Sankara was so close to Fidel Castro because, uh, you know, all these countries were fighting for the total independence. So the, the best way that they were using is socialism, and so they, they were trying to build this kind of uh, same community of fights. So this is why, you know, and it has been trip to Cuba, and also I think that uh, Fidel Castro also came to Burkina Faso. So it, there was, you know, a kind of tie between the two leaders. Okay. When you started uh, mm -hmm. as a public servant mm -hmm. Burkina Faso? In uh, 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 2008. So, that's mm -hmm. my second question. Yeah. How do you, did you feel uh, mm -hmm. that this transformation of this revolution mm -hmm. uh, from inside the, the public administration? Okay, thank you for this question. Uh, really, uh, there was a time that, you know, in the public administration, if you, you, you may have all the, the, the skills to lead or all the skills to, you know, to have a position, But if you are not close to this, you know, political party, unique party at the moment, it was not unique, but it was a strong party that, you know, was controlled everything, you cannot get any position. And also I can notice that, uh, as I say, there was kind of the family, presidential family control over the public administration, even the business, business. Uh, I don't have enough time because this subject could take more than two hours to talk about, yeah. But because of this short time, Yeah, <laughs> I will not say more than what uh, I already said. Yeah, thank you. Shane? Okay. Yeah. Anna. Thank you once again. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting. Yes. Uh, so as far as I know, like your neighbors Ghana, mm -hmm. uh, like two years ago, changed the <clears throat> political system, so they kind of gained democracy back. Mm -hmm. So, but you didn't mention in your presentation this mm -hmm. case. It was. Thanks to revolution, because as far as I know, it was also kind of major control land. So, uh, how do you estimate your neighbors' 
uh, political mm. shifting. Uh, is it an example for you? Uh, or not, or not really? Because yeah. now they recognize mm -hmm. the internationally and mm. President mm. Ghana is welcome everywhere. Yeah. So, or it's different from your perspective. Yeah, I think Ghana is one of the countries in West Africa that have a very good, you know, you know, uh, government, I mean, democracy right now because they have elections since it's not just uh, lately. Uh, I think as uh, we have uh, one of the, the president Jerry Rawlings that took power, it was military that took power and make main reform, you know, and since I think more than 15 years, Ghana is on, on the right, a good way of, you know, transparency in, in, uh, in, uh, in election. And so you have many, there, you have two big parties and the, there is an uh, alternate between the two parties. So Ghana is on the good process since, you know, uh, more than 10 years. Or you try to build something else. Yeah, yeah. Right. Ghana is a good example, but you know, Ghana's political system is different than uh, the Burkina political system because Ghana is uh, the, uh, the colony of uh, uh, Britain. Yeah. And the, this country that's a colony of France are very different than the colonies of, uh, you know, of British. So uh, this makes a difference between our party, but the citizens are looking Ghana as an example to follow. I agree with you. Uh, yeah. Sure, sir. Thank you for your presentation. Okay, thanks. Um, it tells us something about the people of Burkina Faso. Yeah. I should tell you that that uh -huh. um, book that you mentioned, to, uh -huh. Certain Amount of Madness, uh -huh. I wrote the forward. Oh, that. thank you. <laughs> um, you use a unfortunate word in your presentation uh -huh. about the Mosi tribe. Uh -huh. It's not a tribe. Yeah. Mosi is a great nation. Uh -huh. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, there are three points I want uh -huh. you to address. Mm -hmm. First, mm -hmm. that since this revolution, the United States Africa Command mm -hmm. has made a station in Burkina Faso to try to prevent other revolutions mm -hmm. because of the long tradition of resistance. Mm -hmm. It was not only 1982. Mm -hmm. And the French and the Americans are very involved in ensuring that the army is on the side of the Imperialists. The second, is that you did not mention, but there's a move to extradite Blaise Kampari, that in Africa, mm -hmm. we're calling for Blaise Kampari mm -hmm. to be extradited mm -hmm. from Ivory Coast yeah. to stand trial for the crime of mm -hmm. killing Sankar. Mm -hmm. And third, is that Blaise Kampari and the people around him were involved in illicit financial operations that engulf the people of Burkina Faso mm -hmm. and they want these stolen assets returned. And that is part of the revolutionary demands mm -hmm. of the people of 2014. Mm -hmm. And those demands have not gone away. But yeah. did not mention those. Right. I think you, what you said is that I, I, agree, I agree with you in some part. It is true that, uh, as I say, it, uh, the 10 minutes is not enough to talk about this revolution. There's a lot of things to talk about this revolution. Even uh, during the 27 years of Blaise Compare, many things happened. There's a good side. There are some good sides of it. Yeah, because I think I'm not the way, not that we will see things, you know, everything bad with him. There, there are some good side of his action, you know, but it could be also better if it was someone else. But you should know that also that trying to, to govern a country, you could not do it with uh, radicalism. I, 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 I can say this, and this was the way for Blaise Compare to know that uh, African countries is true, that you know, they need their freedom, but they also need to take in, 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 in also in consideration some because if you try to face something that you don't have power to face, you will die early. I think this is what's happened to, 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 to Thomas Sankar. Because he, he, was, he had this willing to change everything now. And you see, and he was not taking in account France that still have control in most of the, you know, the, the, in econo in the, 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 the economic system. And because he was trying to destroy this, you know, they use uh, his best friend to do what happened. And even right now, after our you know, popular revolution, 
This is another subject we can talk about. But right now what is happening, you see in the north side, we have many terrorist attacks. Because we are trying to change things, to, you know, to, to, to value our, you know, our, our own wealth and to also build our economy by using our resources, own resources and also by diversifying our partners. Because of that, we are having some trouble on the north side. And I'm, I'll tell you that if you are not so strong, but even the president right now, I'm not sure that you will have a second term. Yeah, at fair. Yeah, this. And this is, this, these are some strong holes that <laughs> sometimes you need to manage. If you don't learn to manage, then, you know, the situation will suffer from this. And this is what's happened also with Lorang Bago in Ivory Coast. You see, and I agree with you in some part, but we need to take into account other parts. Uh, if not, the world is really a world of, you know, <laughs> interest fights, and those who have power still have, you know, you know, their power on our countries. Yeah. No, in Ivory Coast. Yeah. People wanting to be extradited. Yeah. Answer that. Mm -hmm. The thing is, he stole millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. Morocco, France, and mm -hmm. Ivory Coast helped him keep those money, mm -hmm. and that money the people were going to. Yeah. Not mentioned. He didn't answer the fact that mm -hmm. there's a demand mm -hmm. for the money to be returned. Yeah. But yeah. He didn't answer that. Yeah, I would like to add that right now, because of these security issues, many Burkina are calling bless compared to come back. You'll be surprised, yeah. And this is this is kind of a tool. He supporters. Yeah, sorry. He supporters a lot. No, France. but I'll tell you that right now. Imperialism. Yeah. But that's what I'm trying to get. To, yeah. That we deal with imperialism. Mm -hmm. but he doesn't want to use that term. No. <laughs> yeah. No, but they're not so strong. <laughs> the, 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 the fact is, okay. in 2014, uh -huh. and, and please, uh -huh. you remember, could you tell the people here uh -huh. that this young people who mm -hmm. were demonstrating, yeah. they walked 14 miles mm -hmm. because Kampore moved the capital mm -hmm. and built a new capital, and they walked 14 miles and took it mm -hmm. over. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the capital is still Wagadu. No, but I'm saying he did the new college building 40 miles out. Ah, no, this is, uh, this is the, the, the presidential uh, building. Oh, yeah, the office, office, office. Yeah, this is the office. It's not the capital. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I think what you are saying, imperialism is true. That's what I'm saying. If you try to, to, uh, to, to face it, you know, yes. in, in the radical way, you will have some trouble. I think. <laughs> this, okay, yeah. Uh -huh. uh, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about uh, uh -huh. the rural areas, mm -hmm. in fact, because in my experience, yeah. these revolutions, uh -huh. ideas that yeah. come out of the urban center mm -hmm. for the mass protests yeah. don't have a very strong impact in the rural areas, right. which is a large mm -hmm. percentage of the population. Right. Yeah. And when you talk about Burkina Faso, mm -hmm. you mentioned the lack of employment, mm -hmm. underemployment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And these rural areas are also being influenced by extremist movements like mm -hmm. Mali mm -hmm. in northern Cote d'Ivoire, yeah. in Niger, mm -hmm. and even Boko Haram. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I think what you are saying is right because during this movement, uh, there was more people in the town that was involved to make things change. And as I told you, in the villages, the people were think like, is it necessary uh, to change a president that is in power? Because they think like, you know, the traditional chief in the village are, are, are still have power. So we never change them <laughs> unless they, they, they die. So there was, I think I remember one day someone was asking, what is wrong with changing the president? Is the president, so why should we change? Because they still think that, you know, they still think traditional ways of governance, I mean that, if someone is choose as a leader, he should stay in power until he dies. Yeah. So I agree with you, but these, but there are suffering. They suffer, they suffer in the villages, but there is still this kind of seeing things different, yeah. different way. So they are not, they are not waiting a lot for the political to change their life. So they are trying to do as they can do to survive. Yeah. Uh, Chinese subject. Mm -hmm. uh, I would like to ask you. You told that. Uh -huh. uh, the arts. Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh -huh. So 
ask the power. Yeah. Um, All right. Uh, it, it, did the artist of mm -hmm. Human Fashion had uh, any kind of censorship? Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. you have any kind of censorship or, or had? Uh -huh. Yeah, I think uh, you mean, uh, uh, I do not get very well your question. Um, because in, uh, I'm thinking uh -huh. about my country. Yeah. Brazil, when we had the dictatorship, oh, okay. the artist yeah, yeah. Uh, had, it, it, it had a, a censor uh -huh. uh, institution. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For example, the musicians had to uh -huh. show the, the yeah. lyrics before oh. recording. Okay, okay. The shows had to make yeah. like a, uh -huh. a, a play to the censor. Yeah. Yeah. Before it goes to the public. Yeah. So I'm asking if we can yeah. also have any kind of. Yeah, I think there is no law about it that could keep you from doing it. But in the fact that in, when you do it, you will not have uh, uh, because you people do you know you need you need means you need some sponsor to make your music be known. So you will not have this music be played on the public, you know, television or in the on the radio. So that's what will happen. So where will you get money to, to make this music happen? So, but anyway, there were some you know, musicians that you know, faced these uh, challenges and tried to, to say what they, 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 they think. And this is all the two you know, guys that I show you, that one reggae man and one also rap. That, you know, yeah. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Yeah, okay, Ra. Mm -hmm. Okay, right now, the natural resources that, you know, uh, make strong our uh, GDP is gold, 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 yeah. We have also cotton in agricultural sector that we are transforming it to, to add values on, uh, yeah, as, you know, our dressing now change, you know. We are adding value, so we do not export now the cotton in the you know uh, original way, uh, you know to, you know state. We transform it in order to add value and to export it to uh, China, uh, some Western you know I mean, so European countries. Yeah, so this is what is happening, and also services uh, you know are getting you know more power in a country, so they impact also the economy. Yeah, yeah. Thank you a lot for this presentation. Okay, thank you. Uh, to reference to what, uh, what you said, that there mm -hmm. were internal factors and external factors. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. For Indonesia, we have the same internal uh, factors. That's why the mm -hmm. crisis happened in mm -hmm. 2011. Mm -hmm. And you said that by all the uh, external factors, well, the, uh, your population was inspired by the Arab yeah. Spring. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The question is, uh, in your country, yeah, this is my big question, but is it, is it uh, the model of the Asian, the Asian model now, mm -hmm. right now, after eight years of the uprising of 2011, is it uh, seen by, in the same perspective? Is it uh, how, how your population now, after eight years of after, because I think mm -hmm. different things happen after that. And yeah. So, how is it now? Mm -hmm. Is it still inspiring? Is it still... Yeah, I think one thing you, you have noticed is that we change people who stay in power for more than you know twenty years. And uh, uh, I remember when your your uprising happened in Tunisia, uh, some journalists asked our president, "Are you not you know? Are you uh, do you, you don't think don't you think that you could be?" in the same situation like uh, Ben Ali, he said, no, it is not the same context. It is not the same people, you see. And finally, what's happened, uh, you see, uh, it has been moved. So it's the same context of corruption, the same context of uh, a presidential family that are trying to control economy, to control public administration. I think it's the same context that's happened and also the, the power where that, you know, these leaders, you know, uh, were having. And so right now, in the country, I would say that, as I was saying, is people now start thinking because of these insecurity issues, because of, you know, 
many difficult situations, many things that are not changing as the people was willing to see. So they, they start asking, why did we make this movement and change things? And as I told you, because of this security issue that is happening in the north side, people are asking, finally, Bless Comparo was better. They are saying this in their heart because during his power, one of the things, he was one of, that was ruling the West African, he was kind of negotiator on, on different conflicts, Mali, Ivory Coast. So he, he, he was very respected among, you know, for some reason, among the Western countries and leaders. And what's happened? <laughs> what's happened? We have security, we have stability. And now, because we want to change things and to defend our you know, citizen interest by you know, fighting other interests, we are in trouble. And what we need to develop ourselves is stability. What we need to develop ourselves also is to have peace. If you don't have peace, you will die. <laughs> you will not go anywhere. And one of the things that we should notice if together we unite ourselves as African nation, we can overcome these issues. But if one country decided to do it alone, make sure that you have trouble, <laughs> everlasting trouble. So I think this is something that we should notice in, in this case. I know in Tunisia, people are still thinking that way also, because when you have trouble, yeah, even you, you start having trouble, no peace, no, no economy. So, people will see the condition, the life you know, condition get worse, and this is not good. But you know, this is the history of all the revolutions. You know, even yeah. the old revolution in France, etc. Because revolutions are built in uh, destroying the establishment, mm -hmm. the statical system, but they are also really in building a new one, mm -hmm. especially the uh, defeatism. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. uh, that defeatism. Mm. The Cuban revolution has succeeded after 60 years. After 60 years? Yes. I mean, they need time. They will have. And they need time, and the point is they've survived against the biggest enemy in the world, the Cuban. And the point about, about Tunisia and Egypt is that the structural conditions in Tunisia and Egypt that cause the young people to go on the street unemployment, hunger, yeah. waste of resources and the general condition they have not changed. Mm -hmm. But I, I think we must give it a big hand. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you.